Let's talk derivatives. Lesson 72, we add, what is it, three more derivative rules. And these are special derivatives. You know, they don't fall into the typical, okay, let's just multiply by the new power, subtract one from the old power, or multiply by the old power, subtract one, you know. These are specific ones, okay? Like, you know, like you have a specific rule for e of x, e to the x. You have a specific rule for natural log of x, you know. We've got a couple more specific ones. So, um, the first rule we are talking about is derivative of a to the x, where a is some number. So, this is your exponential derivative other than e to the x, okay? Now, technically, it would also work for the derivative of e to the x, but this one is the derivative of a to the x, where a is some constant, is a to the x times the natural log of a. Now, think about this. If this a was e, the derivative of e to the x would be e to the x times the natural log of e. Well, what would be the natural log of e? One. And so one times e to the x would still be e to the x. So this rule does work for e to the x also. But we learned e to the x a long time ago. And it's just easier to remember that e to the x is e to the x. Okay, so example one. f of x equals 17 to the power of x. What is the derivative of 17 to the power of x? Seventeen to the x times natural log of seventeen. Now, the question becomes how do we write it? And I don't know that there is a best way to write it. Um, I just wrote it as seventeen to the x times natural log of seventeen. Um, parentheses aren't a bad idea here to just kind of, you know, set it off. You wouldn't necessarily have to have the multiplication dot. So you could write it in either order. So I'm going to write the other one down also. But I could do natural log of 17 times 17 to the x as well. So either or. Order works there either way. So again, memorize the rule, right? Example 2. If y is 42 to the power of x squared minus 5x, what is dy dx? Yes. The derivative, I would call it the derivative of that thing, is what you're referring to. Okay. Okay, so, okay, so the derivative of 42 to some power is 42 to some power times the natural log of 42 times the derivative of some power, right? So, chain rule has to take into account because last time, x was in the power. Well, the derivative of x is just 1. That doesn't change anything here. So 42 to the power of x squared minus 5x times the natural log of the base, so times the natural log of 42. And then, so we've done the basic chain rule, or basic derivative rule, the derivative of said power. What is the derivative of x squared minus 5x? Two x minus five. Let's see. And I did put two x minus five in parentheses because it is a quantity, so that would be an important one to be in parentheses. Um, best way to write this. I basically went and put my natural log of forty two and my two x minus five out front, and the forty two to the power out back. I'm not necessarily saying that's the best way, but it's a decent way to write it. 
I mean, this is just kind of a messy thing, so there's not one perfect way to write it. So I have dy dx. I put natural log of 42 first because that's just a number. Times the 2x minus 5. I have both those in parentheses. And then times 42 to the power of x squared minus 5x. Okay, so yes, do remember those chain rules still have to happen. Example three, when you're ready. That y equals cosine of 14 to the x. And we're being asked to derivative notation, the derivative of y with respect to x. I, is that how I say it? Something like that. Just it's another derivative notation, right? Not our typical one, but got some thoughts there? Okay, the derivative of cosine of something is negative sine of something. Right. Yep. Derivative of cosine of something is negative sine of something times the derivative of something. Well, my something was 14 to the x, and the derivative of 14 to the x is 14 to the x natural log of 14. Um, again, best way to rewrite this? I don't know. This is just messy stuff. There's no good way to rewrite it. Realize you can move things around. I do, of course, keep the negative out front, but then I also brought the natural log of 14 out front because it's a constant. So I actually wrote this as negative natural log of 14. And then I did the sine of 14 to the x. And then I did times 14 to the x. And I could have just as easily put 14 to the x in front of the sine. Just realize the equivalent pieces, right? Okay, you got that one a little stuck in your head? And you're going to have to work to separate these, or maybe it's just me that tends to get them confused, but I always have to stop and think here. So, Next derivative we're going to practice. Not natural log, but regular log. So the derivative of log base A of X. So this would be everything but natural log. So any base but base e. And notice it's 1 over the x, so whatever that, the inside the log is, times the natural log of the base. So I don't know if you want to remember that you flip-flop the order of the numbers when you write it, or I don't know how you want to remember it, but I don't have a good way to remember this one. Okay. Let's just practice with it, though, because really a lot of it is about just understanding how to use it. Okay. They're giving us y and asking us to find dy dx. Okay, what is the derivative of log base 42 of x? One over x natural log of 42 plus derivative of log base 10 of x. One over x natural log of 10. Over x natural log of 10. Okay. I probably wouldn't complain if you leave your answers that way. One other thought though. What do these answer what do both pieces of my answer have in common? They have an x in the denominator, yes. And so an alternative answer 
is that you could factor that x out. It's in the denominator, so you can factor out a 1 over x. And that leaves us with 1 over the natural log of 42 plus 1 over the natural log of 10. <coughs> okay, got it? Again, it comes down to memorizing. Takes a little bit of work, but they're not hard to use, at least. Okay, example five. We're given a function. Approximate the slope of the tangent line to the graph of f of x at the point where x equals 1. Okay, thoughts? Okay, so it asks us to approximate the slope of the tangent line, which you saw the word slope of the tangent line, and hopefully your brain automatically said derivative. Or maybe your brain said derivative because that's what we're learning today. So, of course, she wants me to do the derivative. And then it says at the point where x equals 1. So, since it says where x equals 1, after we find the derivative, we will be plugging in 1. Okay. Derivative of log base 9 of x squared plus sine x. So how do we do the derivative of log of something? Okay, 1 over x natural log of the base. Well, what's in our x position? Yeah, so our insides has to come out front. So it's going to be x squared plus sine x. And then it's times natural log of the base. And my base was 9. Now, whenever we do that, we also have to say times what? Okay, yeah, the derivative of whatever was in the x place. So in this case, our insides were x squared plus sine x. So what's the derivative of x squared plus sine x? Two x plus cosine x. Now, in all honesty, you can leave it as that and work it as that. Um, the one, the cleanup you can do, which is pretty easy to do, is write this as a fraction because the 2x plus cosine x can go on top, and then it's still over x squared plus sine x times natural log of 9. And of course, we're not stopping there. We're going to find the derivative, right? The derivative at 1. I don't know what I was thinking there. Which means we are plugging 1 in. So 2 times 1 plus cosine of 1 over 1 squared plus sine of 1 times natural log of 9. What do you know here? 2 times 1 is 2. 1 squared is 1. Sine of zero is one. No, sine of zero is zero. 
Yeah. If we had a sine of zero or a cosine of zero, we could find those, but we don't know cosine of one and sine of one. So what must you do? You got to use the calculator. So, two plus cosine of 1 over parentheses 1 plus sine of 1 in parentheses times natural log of 9. Your job is to get your answer to match my answer. And I do like my answer. I don't know. I've never, I can't figure that out. You would think all these calculators would do the same. And either there's a zero out in front of the decimal or there's not, but I don't know. Unless there's some setting I have, but I don't even know what setting I would have that. Okay. Did your calculator answer match my calculator answer? So what's the trick on this one? Or maybe it wasn't a trick. Yeah, we have to be in radians, yes? You have to be in calculus class, not physics class. Okay, you have to be in radians because it didn't say one degree. It's just one, which means it's by default it's one radian. So I have written down 0 0.6278 because the 3 tells the 8 to stay. And what is this? This is the slope of the tangent line, right? Okay. I believe absolute value is on the back side, right? Okay. Um, derivative of absolute value. This is an interesting one. There is not a specific rule that says the derivative of absolute value is this of this or, you know, this times this or whatever. With absolute value, we have to break up an absolute value equation into different pieces. And we're going to look at different pieces based on what the graph looks like. Which means in order to find the derivative, I'm going to think about, okay, y equals absolute value of x plus 2. What's the equation of the different pieces? which absolute value of x plus 2 is going to be what shape? Absolute value graphs are, of lines are traditionally v's, right? So we're going to have to break up the right half of the v, the left half of the v, and do those individual derivatives. Okay? So what do we know about this v here? Not up to left to. <laughs> there is exactly. He knows we're moving it to somewhere. Okay, so the um, plus two in the absolute value, it's like being in the parentheses, so it's left to right, opposite the sign. So that means we are going to go left two, puts us right there, because it is y equals absolute value of x plus two. That's like the line y equals x plus 2, right? So it's up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. So the right v is going up like this. What's the left half of the v do? Yeah, same thing, but over here left, doesn't it? Okay. So officially, this function has a hard point, yes? It has a hard point at that vertex. And so at the vertex, we cannot take the derivative. Okay, we talk about a V or a hard point cannot differentiate at the vertex. Okay. So, but we do have two other pieces that can. So if I'm going to graph this, I know this right hand side is the line. 
y equals x plus 2. And that makes sense, right? Because it's a line that has a y-intercept of 2 and goes up 1 over 1. Okay. The left side of the v. Now, you can go and try and figure out, like, what it is by figuring this out down here, because where is this going to cross the y-axis? It's going to cross it at negative 2, and it's going to have a slope of negative 1. So you could think of it as negative x minus 2. Also, you could think of it as a reflection, which means it is y equals the negative of x plus 2. Now, which you way you think of that, what did I just do? I did not mean to do whatever I just did on my computer. Okay, well... And we'll figure that out here in a moment. My elbow hit something in it. Okay, maybe I fixed it. Okay, so what we've got to do here, guys, we've got the right half, which is the line y equals x plus 2. The left half, it's a reflection, essentially. It's a negative of x plus 2, or negative x minus 1. We've got to take the derivative of each part. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write out that y equals the absolute value of x plus 2 means, and I'm going to write out what it means. Okay. It means y equals x plus 2. When is this y equals x plus 2? When my x values are what? It's y equals x plus 2 when x is greater than negative 2, to the right of negative 2. So I'm going to say that y equals absolute value of x plus 2 means over here it's y equals x plus 2. That's when x is greater than negative 2. What about when x is less than negative 2? Yeah, negative x minus 2 or the negative of x plus 2. I'm going to make that at the bottom and I'll come back and get the middle. And I don't care there if you write negative x minus 2 or the negative of x plus 2. And that's if x is greater than negative 2. What about when x equals 2, negative 2? y equals 0, right? It's just that point. And so this is y equals 0 if x equals negative 2. And so you guys can't see what's off the edge of the screen. Sorry. Yeah, it should. Did I happen to say it right, maybe? Okay. What I've attempted to do, hopefully successfully now, yikes. It's y equals x plus 2 when x is greater than negative 2, so that's that line. It's y equals negative x minus 2 or negative x plus 2 when x is less than negative 2. And at this point, it's y equals 0. So now we're ready to take the derivative. And basically, you have to take three derivatives. I have this broken into three sections, so I'm taking three derivatives. Okay? So I'm going to, let's see, the derivative. So I'm going to say the d dx of the absolute value of x plus 2 this is what we use when we put something we say take the derivative of something, is equal to, well, what is the derivative of x plus 2? Derivative of y equals x plus 2? 1. And so the derivative of this absolute value function is 1 if x is greater than negative 2. The derivative of this hard point, we can't do it. The derivative of 0, we can't do it there. Okay, We can't do a derivative of a hard point right there. So this just, I'm going to say, does not exist if x equals negative 2. And then lastly, 
What's the derivative of the negative of x plus 2? Negative 1. So the derivative is negative 1 if x is less than negative 2. So derivatives of absolute values, you have to look, you're using your already, your derivative rules you already know, you just have to look at the pieces here. Did you follow how I did that? I'm not going to ask if you liked how I did that because I know the answer there. Okay, excuse me, let's try B. Or, I guess it's example seven, but whatever. Next example. F of x is the absolute value of the square root of x squared minus four. You like the previous one better? I don't blame you. I do too. So let's see. Square root of x squared minus four. Before we even put the absolute value on there, can you visualize the square root of x squared minus 4? Good answer. And now keeping in mind its absolute value, so it's only the positive variations. Where's absolute value? There it is. Okay. And this is one where... I would encourage you to look at a calculator so you can kind of see what's going on here. Can you see that? And Daryl's not wrong when he said some variation of half, you know, half a parabola. Okay. What do you think those parabolas, these half a parabolas are going? Where are they intersecting at? Two and negative two. And this again, go with calculator error, right? You know, think about if I put 2 into this equation. 2 squared is 4, 4 minus 4 is 0. Okay, it makes sense that there's a point at 2, 0. Same thing for negative 2, 0. So when we do this, um, we're going to have to break this up. We have the left piece. We have the right piece. And we have the middle piece, which we just have to, you know, the middle piece from negative 2 to 2 where, okay, yeah, there is no graph, but we do have to still talk about that. Okay? So, um, I'm going to go ahead and put a quick sketch in the notes so you have the visual. Two and negative two. Off the screen, you can't see what I'm drawing. We need, a, we need an equation for each of these pieces. This is the absolute value of the square root of x squared minus 4. The right piece is going to be what? take off the absolute value, and that right piece is just the square root of x squared minus 4. What about the left piece? Okay. I'm realizing I have to disagree there. And I think I probably led you astray, honestly. I'll, I'll take partial responsibility there, but... Okay, so this is square root of x squared minus 4, right? And the absolute value officially makes this all positive, right? What would the negative look like? No, I'm not. Let me double check myself here. Yeah, I'm questioning myself. I believe I 
I believe it's going to be the same. But that's if you make the x negative and then you square it. I'm pretty sure. Notice my red tracing my blue. Yeah. In order to get the bottom one, the negative Notice what I did on example three there. I'm off the screen, sorry guys. I just put a negative out front. The negative is the denominator. Okay, or denominator. <laughs> Thank you for at least relating and not thinking I'm totally crazy. You're not wrong. <laughs> okay, I think I am kind of wrong, but okay, I'll, I'll whatever. Thank you. My point is, this one is actually the same on both pieces. That's what I was trying to get at. Okay, this one they are. There's these two lines have different slopes, but this one, you know, when I went back in and punched in, it still traced the whole thing. Okay, so it's the same thing on both pieces. There's not a negative. And I think it comes down to the fact the negative would be down here. And generally speaking, a square root only re results in a positive, right? So I think that's the other part that I wasn't taking into account. So Now, officially, I am going to write it out like I wrote out up above, that f of x equals absolute value of square root of x squared minus 4, and what that means in each piece. So if I go left to right here, this first piece over here is the square root of x squared minus 4, right? y equals the square root of x squared minus 4, and that is when x is Well, and we're going to say the same both ways. I guess it doesn't matter which way we start. Which way do you guys want me to go first? Does it matter? Okay. <laughs> so less than negative 2. Now, keep in mind, I put a 2 in earlier, yes? Does 2 work here? 2 actually works in this equation, right? Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. So I put less than or equal to negative 2, actually. And I'll write what you're talking about here in a moment there. I'll use that in my final answer. Okay. What do we know between negative 2 and positive 2? The graph what? It doesn't exist. And so from negative 2 to positive 2, I'm going to say y is, I'm going to say not defined. And so y is not defined for values where negative 2 is less than x, less than positive 2. And then the third part is to do the part where x is greater than or equal to 2, and that's back to the original as well. So y equals square root of x squared minus 4 if x is greater than or equal to 2. Now, what is, it, what is it that I'm just taking derivative of? Same thing, both places, yes? So, um, how do we take the derivative of a square root? Yeah, think of this as f of x being x squared minus 4 raised to the 1 half. And so, if I do f prime of x, one half goes out front. One half times x squared minus four. One half minus one is going to be negative one half times the derivative of the inside. Derivative of x squared minus four is two x. OK, 
Okay. Yeah. Did you see a two can cancel? One half and two can cancel. We still have an x, yes. And what do you know about this negative one half? Besides the fact the computer screen is saying you have timed out, you have used up your time, Mrs. Sergeant. Okay, what is something to the negative one half? That is what located where? There we go. Since I seem to be interchanging what a denominator is, I'll tell you what, my brain is just not. Okay, what I was trying to get to the point is, okay, the one half and the two cancel. We still have that x down there, so I'm going to put x on top, and I was going to write it as the square root of x squared minus the other. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> okay, now, for what x values is this? This is true when what? x is... Okay, so generally speaking, it was less than or equal to negative 2, greater than or equal to 2. One slight change when we took the derivative. What value can we not technically use? 2 and negative 2. So for the derivative, I'm going to have to say for x less than negative 2 or x greater than positive 2. In other words, for the derivative, I have to take off the equals part. Okay. We still have one more to go. Yikes. Are we ready? Yeah. I like the bottom one better. I mean, we still, we still have to break into the pieces and everything, but I do like it better. What's the absolute value of x squared minus 4 look like? Let me start with what's x squared minus 4 look like? A parabola? Move down 4. Now, what does absolute value do to everything below the x-axis? It doesn't disappear. Okay. So the idea... Okay, so the idea here... I'm just drawing this in pencil to get you guys... There's x squared minus 4, right? Absolute value leaves everything that's on top, stays. Everything that's on bottom, flips up. It reflects up. So when this reflects up, so first of all, this part's already on top, yes? That part's already on top. This part in the middle, it's going to reflect up. I should have drawn it a little more accurately. What would those um, x-intercepts be? Yeah, it would be your twos. Because think about this. If this was at 0, 0, and then it went over 1, up 1, and then over 2, up 4, it would be at 2 and negative 2. Okay, so first of all, we're going to write out what y equals the absolute value of x squared minus 4. What does that mean? What do we know about over here where it's, if I just start with less than negative 2? Did that change any? This piece to the left of 2, it didn't change any, right? So this is still y equals x squared minus 4. If x is less than negative 2. Okay. Um, Notice I just used less than negative 2 
because at negative 2 and positive 2, we have a hard point, yes? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back and get those at the same time. Or actually, I could go ahead and put them in right now. What do we know at negative 2? Y equals 0, right? And I'm going to go ahead and get them both and say if at X equals negative 2 and positive 2. So I'm going to say plus or minus 2. You guys got to tell me when I'm off the edge of the screen. I'm doing good at that today. Yikes. Okay. What about this part from negative 2 to positive 2? Okay. So I was going to write it as the negative of x squared minus 4 because it's it's reflected, yes. Not disagreeing, you are more than welcome to write Daryl's negative x squared plus 4 if you'd prefer because that is true as well. And that is if, what, negative 2 is less than x is less than 2. And then we have one other piece we haven't defined and that is when x is greater than 2. What's true when x is greater than 2? It's that original x squared minus 4. So you're, I mean, you're breaking this up into the pieces. We've got the left piece, the right piece, which they're the same. We've got that middle piece, which is the reflection. And we've got those hard points we have to account for. Okay. Now, derivative. We can consolidate where we can. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, because I can't, you can't just write one equation for some piecewise functions. So, okay. The easiest one to take care of, what's the derivative of x squared minus 4? Yeah, because these two pieces are the same, right? So, that derivative is 2x. And that is 2x when? Okay, when x is less than negative 2 or x is greater than 2. What if I write it like this? Absolute value of x is greater than 2. Which, and here's what I'm going to say. This is the same as saying x less than negative 2 or x greater than 2. Because if you recall, when you guys first learned um, great, you know, absolute value inequalities, great or than, you set up a what? Or statement, right? x greater than 2 is one of them. And then the other one is you switch both signs, x less than negative 2. And so this is just a cleaned up version of way to write it. Okay, something I just, I wanted to mention. It's a good thing to be able to recognize. Okay. What's the other derivative I need to do here? Derivative of negative x squared plus 4. What's the derivative of negative x squared plus 4? That's going to be negative 2x. Now, you can write if you want negative 2 less than x less than 2. What's the shortcut I'm going to show you? Absolute value of x less than 2. Because if you remember, absolute value of x less than, that's an and statement. It's less than 2 and greater than negative 2, which can be rewritten as an and statement with x in the middle. And then what's the other part I skipped? Those hard points, right? And so the derivative of 0 is just going to not exist. So the derivative does not exist if x is what? Okay, x is plus or minus 2. If I'm going to be consistent here. How about if I say the absolute value of x is 2? Which again, that's the same thing as saying x equals plus or minus 2. And I'm not saying you can't use the other ways. 
not saying that at all, but it's good to recognize the equivalence there. Okay? Seems like something the AP exam would do would put like something equal to it and choose, say choose all the correct answers. Yeah. Uh, or even just picking, you know, okay, here's a derivative, pick which one that's set up right. So. Okay. Oof. 